So there's a big one. So for those who haven't seen it, uh, I don't know if we'll get there. I'll be honest in saying I don't. I don't know if we'll get there at the rate that we're going. But you know, within the next, you know, we're we're actually under eight hours left. But there is this build that I've been uh, meaning to do for some time, which is a rebuild of this Compax MX11800. So um, I can go get the parts to go and begin this. But this one's this one's actually pretty gnarly. Um, so we'll have to begin somewhere even early before we even see the board. Um, so let's let's start taking a look at this one and how we can how we can proceed. And otherwise, this one in the books here and is the prize giveaway. Under eight hours, so close, so close. So the idea I've had for some time now is um, we had this compact MX11800 and it's out there in the living room, but we can, we can pull it out when we need to. But I can show what this, this image looks like and we can talk a little bit about what this build really is. And it's really cool. I'm going to have a, a hit the hey, have a good stream. Hey, I appreciate that. Uh, thanks so much for being here and, and for being actually physically here. And thanks for dropping in again. Glad you made it home safe. and. Hope you take care and have a good night. Um, okay, so let's take a look and um, let's see what this is. Guys, this is a Compact MX11800, which is really interesting for oh so many reasons. So let's let's talk through this one by one. First of all, this is like one of these sort of more classic cherry style boards that's branded by Compact, but has a lot of like really good, interesting things about it. One of the things you might notice right off the bat here is the fact that it has an actual trackball integrated into it. Um, the one that I have, um, it's, uh, so there's, there's a, what do you call it? Like a, the cable is fixed in. So it actually looks more like this, uh, not that, but this, Gosh, that's what I, was, I don't know why it's so tiny. Um, so the cable is fixed. Um, and what it actually has is, um, is this one big, man, that's the same size. Come on, okay, this is, a, I guess, a little bit better. I'll just raise it up. So um, this right here has a fixed cable, and you can see at the very end it has two PS2 cables. Like, it's it's one that splits out into two. And so this is not particularly very useful unless you have, I guess, like a rear I.O. in, like, an actual, like, PC machine um, that can take these two. But um, there are adapters for this. A singular um, like PS2 to USB like active adapter will work for just the keyboard portion, but there are all are all there also are adapters that take a dual US uh, dual PS2 and then output into one single USB, and those which I do have and can include for this type of build um, will actually make the trackball work along with the keyboard, and so that, that I find that really cool and. On mine, it actually is working, and that's really exciting. Um, so uh, that's one factor of this. The second factor of this this actual compact MX11800 is the fact that this is a really, really good donor board for like old cherry brown switches. A lot of people will like harvest like vintage browns out of this board. And that's exactly what I've done here, and that's what the purpose of this thing was. Um, this is a whole bag here full of the MX11800 vintage brown switches. Um, and then there's a little bit more to this as well. Uh, okay. I'll go, I'll continue with the positives. Um, one of the things is that if you look at this key set, it's actually like pretty cool, pretty useful. If you take a look, it actually has one point, like it's a lasered key set, which is, you know, some people might say that's not the greatest thing, but if you look at what like is really here at its core, this is like a really, really usable key set with some caveats. One is that there's no split backspace, obviously. But I mean, that's just how it is. And that's what, you'll have to deal with that. 
The other little weird caveat is that this is not a 1.75U um, shift, but this is actually a 2U shift, and there is stabilizers on it. But what's really cool is, what actually is really cool is the fact that this bottom row exists, which means that you, you actually do get here um, 1.5 unit uh, modifiers as well as a 7U space bar. And this is this is what just like makes it this at this core, like really, really nice, usable, like right here at its core. And so I think that's cool. We actually ended up using it on like a separate sort of budgetized build um, for, uh, you know, that we had put together, um, you know, in a, in a previous stream, like I, I want to say like last year or so. Um, and we just reuse these keycaps because it's just it feels very budget, you know. Split bass space user Chris. I knew I like Chris when I first see him. HHK, yeah, I'm an HHKB guy. <laughs> yes, recover the usability through these extra split keys. Okay, um, so now here's the extra weird parts. Um, one is that this is a completely plateless board. So uh, as is most cherry, like OG cherry boards, this one a compact branded, branded cherry board. Um, but another thing that makes this really weird is that the brown switches that were soldered into this also actually had in-switch jumper wire. So um, without this, the board just won't work. So one of the plans that I have here is that from within this like giant bag of switches, I need to harvest out all of the jumper wires and then solder them back in directly into the board. Why they didn't do this right off the bat, I don't know, but we're gonna have to do it ourselves. And that's probably what's going to be like what I imagine to be the rest of the stream is is doing all these little things like harvesting the jumper wire and then like resoldering them onto the board directly. And then on top of that, um, I guess, uh, like clipping them, um, like clipping the actual extra little pieces so that this actually, you know, can, can look to, to work and uh, sort of fit in properly. Uh, one of the reasons why we opt to do this instead of putting in the jumper wire into say for example separate switches that we're going to throw into in this meme build is because the meme housings don't actually have um, like slots for the jumper wire specifically. It's completely hollowed out because the housings of the meme switches that I plan on using um, they they have like the emptied out bottom portion of the switch so that like it could be more usable for LEDs and shine through keycaps. So that part of it makes it really not useful and what makes it like kind of necessary here to, to solder these indirectly into the board. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna actually work on this right now. Um so I need a few trays. We had trays a little bit earlier. Chalupa of Suspended, welcome. Are you the same Chalupa that was here earlier? A few trays. We had those glasses as well. I gotta find where I put those. I'm not sure where I placed those. Maybe we can go without them. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Hmm. I really wish I did though. I am Chalupa. Wait, how'd you get suspended? <laughs> what has happened here? We. We were all on the same stream just uh, just a little while ago. Hmm. All right, I can't find those little glasses, but let's just uh, let's just move along. <clears throat> So I guess I'll dump all of these out. Hmm. 
there's a lot of them and the hope is that there's just enough here but I do have some extra jumper wire that I've harvested from old boards so in case there's any that I go and miss then I think it'll be fine the interesting thing about these is these are kind of heavy I don't know if these springs are like kind of long or something all right so I have to figure out Uh, what makes this a little bit weird is, is opening this okay? Yeah, it is. <clears throat> okay, so there's five parts, which includes the jumper wire. It's kind of why I want another tray. Let me go and find one. One second, uh, I gotta organize a few things. Here we go. All right, so we're just gonna crack all these open and take uh, all these jumper wires out. But I guess I'll also at the same time, um, what I think might be an interesting thing is if I keep these all disassembled so that I can in the future uh, just like tune these without having to reassemble. Um, funny thing here is this goes a little bit against the grain of, um, you know, the whole idea of like, you know, breaking in and keeping all the stuff, all the parts together. But like, honestly, we did that last time around and I'll do that when, given that I was instructed by it for R and D KVD on those worked in switches. The idea is like a vintage switch here, like in this particular case is supposed to have the same thing. Then I'm not technically following that same type or style of rule, but at the same time, I honestly don't think it matters that much. Oh, looks like this uh, vinyl ended, by the way, so let me go and... Uh, we're supposed to have fulfilled this other redemption for another uh, vinyl that I never did. This was maybe about like five hours ago. <laughs> so let's do another one. It'll be, oh, Tash Sultana. Let's find this Tash Sultana one. Uh, flow state. You guys might be into Tosh Sultana, especially some of you guys who are here in my late hours. So that'll be around five, five, and nine inch nails. That is over here. Okay. All right. So here's Tosh Sultana. Flow state. I may have played this on stream, maybe a, quite a bit back, but this is a cool one. It's got this like marbled orange and yellow look. So uh, we're running it. 
This is, let's see if we can try to figure out which side is which. I think this is A. <laughs> and presumably this is A30, 33 again. Oh shit, is this actually a 45? This sounds kind of fast. Or slow? We'll see. I'll play with some headphones and we'll find out shortly. Oh, this is slow. <laughs> All right, pausing it soon and we'll adjust the speed. This is her, as we expect. <clears throat> so one of the funny effects that will happen out of this is that we're going to re-solder in these jumper wires directly into the board and we're going to have to cut but I'm going to need to find some tools that will allow me to make those cuts kind of cleanly and we'll see, we'll see when that happens. Try not to sit so much like, what was it called earlier, sitting like a shrimp. This is, uh, <clears throat> there are a lot of switches here. Oh. This will be like, I think over a hundred. I'm gonna 
hydrate a little and probably need a little bit of water. So I think this little, like the smaller thumb sized switch opener is the better one to sort of proceed with just because there's a lot of space like at the bottom that I don't think the Gateron Nutcracker style switch opener provides for these jumper wires to sort of sit freely. You can kind of see this, yeah we can kind of see this here, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there are these um, holes here that are there for the Oh wow, it's actually raining outside. And some guys are uh, you know, screaming at each other. But That board, you know, one, one thing I'm thinking about is that that board's going to be a little bit weird to test because I'm not sure that there's a key, a key tester that will really capture everything. Like all the different keys that, I don't know, I'm not sure what a lot of them will do. There's these like interesting sort of Oh, it should actually. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. For some reason, I thought there were way more keys on this than I thought there were. We should be solid. So should be, what I'm thinking is that there's probably about a hundred four or so switches here, though I could probably just try venture account. So at the top section, the function row. That's 12 plus 10, you get 22 at the top, the normal numpad as 4 plus 9 plus 4 keys 17 so that's 22 plus 17 is 39 oh that's a gray nice Twenty-two plus seventeen plus four. That's forty-three. Loyal Moses, thank you for the follow. And then 
in that portion near the bottom. Hey, brother, what's going on? I'm trying to count here, 14. Maybe try to compare with, so tempted to build a keyboard? Hey, I think you should. <laughs> I'm currently harvesting or at least disassembling individual keyboard switches right now. I know how addicting it can be. <laughs> yeah. So I'll call this 60 minus 258. 58 plus 43. Is that 101? 58 plus 43, 98 plus 3. Yeah, that's 101. So this is 101 keys, and I only need 60 of them. But I do need 101 of these jumper wires. But then I also need to just be sure that I have a way to test that every key works, which I think just looking at this, there isn't any sort of keys that are really, really funky. They all should be relatively normal keys. For Loyal Moses, welcome to the stream. I hope that there are no. Holy, I just noticed me live for 16 hours. Yeah, this is um. This is a 24-hour subathon that I've got going on. And yeah, we're uh. We're over two-thirds of the way, so less than less than eight hours left to go. We got this build. Yeah. Um, you've hit the exclamation giveaways command. Uh, you can see all the giveaways at each individual sub goal. We'll see how many of these we hit. We've had a lot of fun so far today. I don't know if we'll hit all of them, but you know it's been it's been good fun today. Yo, man, thank you, thank you for that. I think that's up, the gift sub. I appreciate it. Tragic Empty, I hope you enjoy the uh, the ten best emotes on Twitch. Thanks to Loyal Moses, the gift sub from Loyal Moses. If you're out there, or if you're watching the VOD. I've cracked a lot of these open. Loyal Moses, what brings you here tonight? Other than, I don't know, were you just uh, sort of looking through keyboard building tonight? Dropped right in. Make 
Makers and Crafting category. Whew, got a not hunch over. I've literally tried to avoid keyboard streams. <laughs> that's I mean, that's an interesting perspective. The rabbit hole, yeah, yeah. I I, I get it. I get it. Hundred percent. Cyrus and I, let's do this. <laughs> this is not really at all going to be a conventional build that we have coming up here. Not at all. <laughs> Even the sort of prerequisite that we're doing right now, it's just, it, this is really, really going to be atypical. But I appreciate that you're here, and I hope that huh, what I'm doing here might eventually, I mean, I'm not sure about right this second, but might eventually interest you. Again, we're just, we're doing some switch disassembly here. Something that you'd eventually have to do if you wanted to tune these switches, but on top of that, we have the, I don't know if you call it added bonus, but we're trying to harvest a specific part of here, which are these, uh, these jumper wires. And again, this, this this idea of using jumper wires inside of switches as you need to harvest them out, really, really not typical. You'll only really see it on these sort of older boards. Right. I think this is just finished on this side. We are listening to Tosh Sultana's album, uh, Flow State. Well, I've been getting a lot of messages today. Randomly catching up on some messages that I've had throughout the whole course of this stream. <laughs> and uh, I'll need to respond back, uh, you know, post stream. Music is great. Oh, nice. Thanks. Glad you like it. All right. A couple dozen switches left to harvest from, I think. profile custom keyboards Ooh, that's a good question um, I think like in terms of 
the the sort of discussion of lower profile there's like a lot of different ways you can look at them um so we, we yeah we can i think we can kind of talk about it. like in some aspects it's like it's kind of what do you define as low profile um there's for example just like at a very very basic example i think like kbd fans um sells like something that they call a low profile like 60 percent case um and that'll still take like these types of MX switches, but um, in terms of the actual board itself, there's like, it's pretty low. Like it's low in the sense that like um, the plate that all the switches that you would seat these on um, just like will be the same height as the case itself. So there's like a little bit of an exposure of um, like, like no lip or anything that gets shown. Um, I think there's another aspect of if you're looking at somebody who's like really putting together or designing a custom keyboard, the idea of what goes into low profile is like all the aspects of like, you know, what is the front height? What is the angle? Um, a lot of ways that they can look at it. But yeah, and then when you're talking here, like you use a Mac keyboard daily, uh, not sure I could jump to a taller keyboard. Um, there is this like just completely entire separate aspect of like switches that were meant to be, you know, sort of in like indicative of that that definition of low profile um, so there's like these low profile they call them like chalk switches there's like variants of cherry switches that are like not this like typical standard mx shape um, that really really don't get known quite as much um, but they're they're a lot like scissors si like scissor style switches uh, which is possibly what i think the mac uh you know the mac style keyboards might be using i'm not 100 percent sure um, there's, what have I talked about? Uh, th those would probably be the most common ones. Um, I guess these low profile chalk switches and, um, some, some different cherry G 84s, I think, I think they are scissor. Yeah. So there, there are some scissor switches. I don't know if you call them like super customizable by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, when, when you look at the world of say custom keyboards, um, uh, th there's a few more that we like you could talk about I, I suppose things like um, Tok Ray short throw which is not something that anyone ever really sees um, yeah uh, the the world of, of custom keyboards though I think is is largely been dominated by this particular style of like MX switch though this flavor so you're not you're possibly not going to get you know as great of a low profile as say your your mac keyboard would would provide your apple your super low profile apple keyboards but that's just kind of how it is um, a lot of people do appreciate this part of it in terms of being able to customize it and get it to feel really nice but um the profile is kind of what the compromise might be if if the profile like low profile is something that you've always been used to and and what you really like well, they are beautiful. Makes me want one. Yeah, Mick Fernando, by the way. Uh, Mick Fernando, I, I saw you come in a little earlier. Dumbfounded by the uh, lack of HHKB build. Oh, uh, this is not actually the build that we're working on right this second. So I should change that command. I appreciate you hitting that. So let me change it here. That is the board that I'm driving right this second, though. So we'll switch this up. build all right I I could write more into it right now but um, you know some of it will sort of reveal reveal itself and the uh, the build command is updated but is very very brief what layout is the best and why is it HHKB <laughs> HHKB is the best layout and it's because of the way it is. <laughs> now, I, I look at it like it's the best specifically for me. I think it's just my muscle memory has always really loved it. And layout to me is something that's the most important thing, uh, which is, uh, I guess, a really uncommon answer among, you know, people in the hobby. Um, 
yeah, I think it just it just functions really well. Everything's there. It's compact enough uh, to the point where things are recognizable and, and you know I think usable. But some people prefer smaller, which is that that's kind of outstanding to me. I was like, wow. Okay, almost done harvesting all this. After this one, we just have that tactile gray. Okay, so we're going to crack this one open. And, well, I think it would be useful. I think maybe I'm going to just take out the jumper wire and then, like, keep this hole. I think that's just kind of the best way to handle this for now. I don't really want to lose these parts per se. So well, I guess I'll keep this here. Okay, so that is disassembled there. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, the tiredness is setting in. All right, we got seven more hours. <laughs> seven more hours of this. Big yawn. Oh, dude, Kevin, what's going on? Welcome. I gotta go nap mode. All hex. All right. No worries. No worries. Guys, I appreciate anyone who's like here right now. You know. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna go grab the uh, the actual whole set here. This is like an old, this is a rack shelf box, but this is what contains all my, all my stuff for this board. So we'll put this off to the side for now. Show all this. These are distinct plates for each of the individualized sections. This is the entirety of this board, which includes this cable. Here's the board and some extra jumper wire. See you in a couple hours. Thanks. Hope you have a, a good nap or full sleep, whatever it may be. So one, one thing that disturbs me right off the bat is how many stabilizers this has. This is just, uh, this is just ridiculous. Okay, so this is this is the board we harvested parts out of. Um, so we're going to crack this open and take, it, whoops, take a look at this PCB. We'll see exactly what it is we need to do. And it'll, it'll again, it'll reveal itself what it is we need to do. This right here is going to be this freaky late night or early morning build that I think is interesting. And if you're up here watching tonight, you get a glimpse of what is what I think is really, really interesting. But it's not quite the same, you know, level of, of say, hype as, you know, the big 10 hour build we did earlier that we uh, <laughs> spent all this time on. But this one's chill. This one's chill, and this one will be interesting, I think. All right, so now I have to remember how to disassemble this. Okay, there's a couple more. I thought those were like lock tabs, but these are just more screws.
should hopefully lift off. But it does seem like there's something of a tab that connects some of these together that I just have to kind of recall. <laughs> been a while since I've opened this up. I think there's like a sort of press lock in here somewhere that I've sort of forgotten about. And then they're just supposed to like detach them. Oh, there we go. Okay, so here's this, but it is connected in quite a few spots and we just have to figure out how to safely sort of lift some of this stuff up, which isn't immediately obvious. Despite the fact that I have done this before. Okay, what I think I wanna do is maybe I'll unscrew this in the two spots that I need to. So there are these two silver screws here that put down where the trackball is. Um, I'm not sure if I even needed to take this one out yet. I might have. Okay, let's try to lift this off. Okay, I kind of might want to do this overhead just so that we're able to see some of this in case I need to come back for it. But there are two silver screws here. Um, but now that I can sort of remove this, then we should be should be good oh shit I forgot the order of that already <laughs> I immediately forgot the order of this I'm guessing the plastic had to have gone here or something but I'm not sure <laughs> uh oh hmm I don't know how well that showed here in the uh, the VOD, but okay, there's this plastic piece that separates this sort of what I guess is a daughter board style situation um, from the rest of this. Now, one of the things I wonder is if I really had some type of removal for this, which I guess this is like, this might be just be screwed in. And as soon as I unscrew this, then we can get a scenario. Here whereby we can pull this off. Okay, so a lot of this just completely then is able to lift off of this plastic case. And here we are left with this PCB. And you can see from this point now, well, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, what I think we can kind of plainly see is just like where all of these jumper wires are supposed to go and how they should, should exist. So like as an example, like one thing I may want to consider is like throwing these jumper wires back in here so that they look a lot like the rest of what already exists there as part of the design. I guess I would have to tape this down and then solder. Like solder these in and then when it comes out through this other side, um, I have a couple of options here to like either sort of like fold it in um, and or cut them because they're so long since they're supposed to sit and live within the um, the switch but we're not doing that anymore so um, keeping this all down I think it just has to be with tape so we might just like do that but there's just like there's a lot of this <laughs> and I don't know if I trust myself oh boy <sighs> this is where it gets like kind of funny. 
So like if I tape this down, then it is like just there. And then maybe I can make this decision. I, I don't know if I want to do this one by one, but um, I get a little disturbed by this. Uh, potential notion of like pulling off a jumper wire when I don't intend to. Okay, one of the things that maybe I can consider doing is just removing this whole cable out entirely so that way it's just not so completely in the way. This is cool. Thank you. I, I don't think this is really, really, again, really, really typical of a build that you'll see on like keyboard Twitch or keyboard YouTube. But this is a project that has intrigued me in some ways because this board could still end up being usable in some capacity, even if we end up memeing it hard. Okay, so I'm going to lift this up very carefully and set it down on this case because there is like a lot attached to it at the moment. Set this over here. All right, so we kind of have this PCB now. That's just the PCB. Um, and then now maybe what I'll do is, ooh, uh, shoot, we got to clean up a little bit so I can get my my work mat into play because uh, I don't want to mess up this brand new desk mat I just got. What I want to do is uh, instead work on top of a, uh, like a sort of beater mat that this doesn't want. This one doesn't get all messed up. So thanks for your patience. We're going to tidy this up here so we could lift this off and put the solder mat we were using a little bit earlier this evening. Craft mat. It's funny. It's actually just another cloth mat that again is, is a beater because I, I used to use those like silicone mats but we actually gave one away. One that I used to use that a lot of people think is really nice but I like I like just using this. It's, it's a little bit more freeing even though it came at the expense of like destroying like previous mats. <laughs> so this one, this one was a nice mat of a uh, Mount Fuji, but like at some point, like I kind of destroyed it, and I was like, oh well, sales broken. Let's just use it all the time for for these solder projects. All right, so we have here fan. We can get this we can begin to heat this and you can see here we have this jumper wire that should be helpful for for this to sort of work the way we need it to granted there might be some tools we might need to sort of clip these short so that things are things are good you know Ooh. Oh, we need to switch discs, don't we? second disc in here that I have to locate by opening this up.
All right. Let's do the next seven best hours of your life. Gonna head out first. Okay. Appreciate it. <sighs> Appreciate it. Hope you uh, hope you take care, man. Glad to see ya. Oh, almost tipped that over. Oh, no, no, no. All right. Okay. Essentially, all we need. So, we just put in a little bit of solder there. Um, one of the things we can do from this point now is, like, bend it and or clip it. So maybe we'll just clip it and see what happens. So I need like another little trash tray, I guess. And I'm like running low on trays at this point. Hmm. Oh boy. I gotta find another tray to go back. Alright, give me a minute. Get my ducks all in order here. Doing a bunch of this stuff off screen and not even necessary. <clears throat> okay, so I have this tray full of these O rings from last from from May actually, the last time the whole gang was here. I was having them work on this little task where I had them remove O rings from the bottom of these keycap stems, which is a super super boomer keyboard thing to do. But once I can get all these uh, this tray and into this little baggie, then now we have a freed up tray. And from this point now, I can just pull my trash here. Okay. And that, I think, about does that, except I might like to sort of, I don't know, flatten out uh, any remainder here, which I don't know the easiest or best way to do that. I mean, just bend it over, I guess, with something hard. Okay. I think I might have put too much solder, kind of. Okay, so I just gotta be careful about these two guys here. So. Maybe I could do two at a time. Yeah, let's do two at a time and then maybe we can up to four at a time if all's good.
simple. Do a cut. Four cuts. All right. So we're good on that. Again, just trying to be really careful between this guy and this guy. There's like copper foil and then this like daughter board connection. Let's see if I could do four at a time. Oh, I think we can. this back over I think we could do four at a time with this one singular piece of tape and that's you know at least just about as much as I'm comfortable with at a time for now So these are really gridded because this is this function row. Probably going to be less obvious on what to do when we hit the uh, alphas that are staggered.
this thing just flopping around makes me really uncomfortable. Alright, I'm only able to do two here. Because of this strange gap. One thing I could do is instead of I could just do a bunch at a time and then tape all of it down. I'm going to do that. Let's do a big piece. I just taped over some tape. Okay, cool. So I think we finished this sort of function section in terms of soldering. So we're doing all these clippings right now. I have another set of like I think they're like vertical wire cutters. Should probably work much better than these, but I don't really want to get up right now. Okay, uh, looks like I have to flip this disc.
past side of this tash the ton of them. I can kind of cut two at a time. Kind of. A little bit of a challenge. Okay, I think that's all for this section. Okay, so the big piece of tape with a much littler piece of tape right there. And should all be good. All right, we got some interesting spots because I'm supposed to remove all these stabilizers. just kind of left to wonder what to do with all this. Okay, how far will this piece of tape take us? Essentially three rows and pretty far, so like down here to this point.
I'm getting like three rows worth of this. The hope is that we can like tape this down. I think I got a little more to it too, I think. But I'm not gonna risk it. it around and work through all of these and again I'm just trying to be somewhat careful somewhat There's that partial row. partial row here on this uh, strip of tape. I start from this bottom row. Oh shit. Where'd that fall to? come at this these wires from an angle that's probably our best bet oh my god kumi keeps all right it's a little little late here but kumi keeps with a big old raid no worries kumi keeps hey welcome so much uh, thanks so much and welcome thanks for bringing over your uh, community here 
We are on trying to complete this 18th hour of the uh, subathon. 24 hour subathon. In the middle now of completing this project. But we're not very close. <laughs> How'd you get into the keyboard hobby? Uh, I got into the hobby in about 2012. Um, I had just graduated college. And when I was in college, you know, I'm a college student, broke, all that. Um, you know, I'd like kind of browse slick deals, just kind of looking for, oh, I want to I, I get like a nice-ish keyboard. And I just like wait around, wait around, not actually get one. Um, and then after I graduated, I, I kind of you know, had a little bit more free time in my hands because I didn't immediately have like a full-time position anywhere. So then one thing led to another and you realize you're doing a little too much research, a little too much homework, and then you find yourself on Geek Hack. Uh, and you realize, <laughs> I end up realizing, okay, maybe maybe I can go a little bit past what my original plan of just getting a nice, like a nice-ish deal on some like, you know, not really, I guess you wouldn't even call it like a mechanical pre-built keyboard or anything like that. Just take it a little, like one step a little further. So I ended up just like diving into, diving into it from there. Once you, you dug around a little bit too much, <laughs> you know. Our little rabbit hole. Yep. Um, managed to take a peek before I stream Splatoon. Wait, hey, Kumi keeps you stream Splatoon? Nice. As soon as awesome. We were playing a little bit earlier today with uh, Glennon and Shibiku. Um, oh, before I should. Okay, got it, got it. <laughs> well, thanks for dropping by for sure. Um, It has maybe even more of a chonker than what your cyberboard Kumi <laughs> definitely. Um, so right now, this is a compact, a compact MX11800, uh, a board that a lot of people harvest vintage brown switches from, but I'm trying to repurpose it. And one of the things that happens is that the vintage browns that you have to harvest um, have these jumper wires. So for one, you have to take the jumper wires out of the switches in order to be able to like you know use this in most other boards because most other PCBs don't even like need or like it's necessary that you remove jumper wires from them. MX Blacks, welcome. Oh, diodes. These are not diodes. They're they're not in switch diodes. They're in switch jumper wires. So uh, <laughs> the jumper wires just kind of like make this connection that's not like the same as like the diode connection that you'd have in switch. Um, they literally just look like this. Uh, See if we can show this off. Uh, this <laughs> this overhead focus might be broken. All right, let me try this. Shut this off. There we go. Flip it back on. Slightly different from in switch diodes, but the same the same kind of idea in the sense that you do have to remove them um, from the switches now. Meanwhile, in order to be able to, to repurpose the board that I harvested this stuff from, um, you need those jumper wires to be back in here. And I'm and in the sense that I'm trying to like rebuild this board to use like some other meme switches. Um, this is what I'll need to do, especially considering that the meme switches that I'm using don't have the same like holes. Um, for jumper wires as the cherry switches in here did because <laughs> that area is hollowed out in the switch to allow for <laughs> uh, like the LEDs to pass through if you're using like in switch LEDs or whatever. Okay, I'm gonna flip this back around. I think everything otherwise looks good there, so I'm gonna continue throwing down all these jumper wires. Well, it looks like our 
we finally were able to finish the outstanding vinyl. Okay. Turn this off. Uh, and then we'll get back our uh, our stream music on. We haven't played any stream music in some time. Yeah, it sounds like a fun project, but complicated. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's real ridiculous. Yeah, so um, again, for anyone just tuning in, I'm doing this 24 hour subathon here. Fixed to 24 hours, so we got about a little under six and a half hours left. Um, and a couple of these builds that we've done, the last build as well as this build, these are actually prize items to be given away. The last one that we did just prior to this was like a sort of budget tray build with some meme ish keycaps, and then this one right here is entirely a meme build just based off of the switches and all the stuff that you have to do for it. All right, this one might not necessarily work, so we'll pull that off. Throw this back on. Oh no. Ah, what a fool I was. Let me see if I could throw this here. Maybe this will work. I can't imagine doing such fine detail stuff 18 hours into a subathon stream. Well, it's like I've, I've kind of known this to be my plan for some time. Like this was always in the plan. So I kind of, I kind of had a sense of like, I think I know what I'm doing, I think. Uh, <laughs> I hope. Um, so it's just a matter of like executing it. And we had a bunch of guests here earlier this evening. Um, and I knew that that was going to be like sort of fun times. But you know, if I could crack down and focus on, on this particular type of a build uh, that requires, you know, it does require some fine detail, but it also does uh, just require like, you know, the time to take to do it. Um, I think like we'll be solid. I think that that's how I felt this whole time. Okay, <clears throat> might need to take a swig of water soon, so I'm going to pause after I solder. We'll need to do a little extra clipping of these, uh, these jumper wires that I'm soldering in. How good are keyboards? Thank you for that. Maybe I need a little more, don't I? Ooh. Thank you. All right. Some snips.
So I'm not looking at here. This is a Compax MX11800 PCB, <laughs> um, for which I'm re-soldering in what was previously in-switch jumper wires back directly into the PCB without being into inside of the switches. So as I'm resoldering them, like each of these wires need to be sort of cut just because uh, they're really long and they were long because they used to be inside of switches before. And now that they're no longer inside of switches, it's just like a lot of extra. Okay, cool. All right. So we're not really that close to done yet. <laughs> All right. So I gotta raise this up a little bit so I can get these wires through here, then tape them down. can knock out this stabilizer free bottom row with what tape I do have. Yo, Thok Thumbs, thank you for the uh, continued gift sub. I appreciate that. What are we at? We're at 143 now, I think? Thank you.
clipping. So we got a big portion of this done, but still a big portion more left. We have all these like sort of side modifier keys that need to have this done, but it's hard to do when all these stabilizers in here. I think I need to remove the stabilizers anyways, just cause um, we want to tune them. There's so many stabilizers, it's crazy. There's so much. Oh. Roll. All the tiredness starting to set in, guys. Alright, maybe I do just need to take off all the, the stabilized keys, or the stabilizers. Okay, so let's throw down. I think I could put one more right here.
good spot there. This side has a few for us to look over. The bottom row, really. This bottom section, the, the keys are just spread out so strangely. I have to make sure not to forget some of these. What happened to have an atmosphere vinyl? Uh, no, I don't. I'm not familiar with atmosphere. Is that like an, an artist? Oh, I see, I see. Okay, I'm not super familiar with atmosphere. Gotta go, have a winning answer. Oh, Toasty, thanks so much for being here. And thanks so much for all the gifted, man. Again, I appreciate it. Did not expect it at all. Thank you. Pretty good, pretty good for now. All right, so I need one, specifically just one right here. So I'll throw this one down. But I think what's interesting is the prospect of doing all of this, if I cut this down, should hopefully be able to, to do at least quite a bit of it. On this numpad section here.
Is this it? Got another one. What have I missed? Oh, space bar. Oh, shit. Okay, we'll come back to it. I think there's really only just this pass and one more after. Yeah, so we're doing this numpad section. annoying between that piece of foil and this daughter board. Pretty annoying. This numpad area should be good, but we gotta cut it off. Alright, let me get an angle. This daughter board is kind of annoying. Man.
Oh, here it was. Thought I lost that for a second. Where did it have a short? kind of long here. Trim that just a little bit. Alright, everything looking pretty good. I think we have one last stretch. Two, just two. That would be this left alt and then this space bar. Okay. Last two. All righty. Little snips. I think this board is the way it should be, or at least this PCB should have just been like this from the start. Less than six hours. Okay. Uh, what is next? Uh, we have these stabilizers to tune, um, but one of the issues that we have encountered is the fact that I can't really reliably clip these fangs. I think I'm starting to run low on those. Uh, Plate mounted stabilizer inserts. Coffee next. I don't drink coffee. That's the thing. The only caffeine I ever get is from like coffee ice cream. This is it. Okay, we I think this will work. Will it? Yes. I think this is it. Should I tune these? I mean, I guess I should. The only problem is I don't have anything to sort of like wedge in to um, uses like shims for ensuring that 
these uh, stabilizers stay in. Damn, there's so many stabilizers, this is nuts. Like, I already take like a million years doing stabilizers when I have to do three. There is literally... Eight? Is there literally eight of them? So I need 16 of these inserts. I don't even know if I have that many. Five, 10, 15, 16. Are there enough in here? Twelve. I need four more. Oh, I actually do have enough. One last one. Okay. So there are in fact enough here. Man, what a these are man, what I got in here is crazy. Oh boy, okay, I'm gonna turn this off for now. I need the lube. I think it's time to stretch. Ooh. I feel like there have been periods here where I have started to have things go missing. Like my lubes. Ooh. I get a little hungry. I'm gonna go wash my hands and then take a bite of something. I don't know what yet. Shutting that window just a little bit. For now.
a little bit re-energized. <clears throat> Five and a half hours, guys. <clears throat> Almost there. Like, so close. Nevetso. Oh, welcome. Big Boss, Nevetso. Coffee break? I, I don't drink coffee. So. <laughs> That's a key here. No coffee. So I don't have toothpicks. I'm trying to think what I can use to shim in to make sure that these stabilizers don't pop out. I see Philippe, welcome, welcome back. You guys know what people use to uh, keep cherry clippins, uh, you know, adhering? To the PCBs? I know that a lot of people use toothpicks, but I don't have any toothpicks on me. Maybe I should have bought toothpicks. How did the HHKB build turn out? That's where I fell asleep. <laughs> It was a long build. That was a 10 hour build. <laughs> a lot of uh, blundering there, but we, we actually did it. We finished it. Lifted pads, unfortunately, in a couple of spots. Um, but we got it done. Um, a lot of help from a lot of different folks to um, perform these, uh, I guess you call them bridge connections so that we can finally get it to work and it's this guy right up here and it's it's working and that's I don't know what to say man it's the board that I've wanted for so long albeit with many many scuffs and it's great There's so many of these stabilizers, man. It's crazy. All right, again, just uh, calling out. If anybody knows any of the uh, the cherry clip-in tricks, let me know.
paying some of this off. Might have been like some old lube or just some weird gunk that got in there. Nine down, seven to go. Crazy how many like boards I harvested in the distant past that had all these stabilizers. Kind of weird. All right. Just a few more left, and then we have to start putting all the wires together. Stretching helps stay awake. Appreciate that. Sixteen inserts, eight stabilizers. All right. Okay. I guess we're going back to the two of six grade two. I guess I didn't really need to clean this up earlier as much as I did, but back at it. Just gonna shoot in a bunch of 206 grade 2 on every wire because I don't really have a palette dedicated for this and, and that's fine I think but I do wonder if I need more So 
side one. if I hit every spot on that other side. Oh, zero with the random vinyl. All right, we'll, uh, oh shit, oh shit. Oh, this is a disaster. We'll settle that after stabilizers, to be honest. Your voice got lower since yesterday, so the music overpowers you a bit. That's what I kind of figured. I've been talking kind of quiet. <laughs> I'm getting a little tired, you know? All right. I just turned down the music. I want to talk at this level anyways. Uh, who knows when I might get louder later on. His high-pitched voice went to sleep, low pitch had to take over. <laughs> it's true. We're back to background music. Is it is it now too quiet? a bit quiet okay I turned it up a tiny tiny bit just now maybe not by enough all right well I really flooded this one okay good levels maybe oh wow it's getting brighter out which I think is kind of how time works but A lot of stabilizers, man. This board's got way too many. Almost three times as many than I'm used to. What time zone am I in? I'm in uh, California Pacific, so. Pacific time zone, I'm in, I'm in California, San Francisco here. have enough to throw on residual lube onto this side. A fucking dumbass I know ass mode lives in Cali. <laughs> yeah.
Foxan, welcome. Good to see you again. How's your night been? It's been good. This is our third build. We've been making all these builds interesting, haven't we? I'm in the middle of working on uh, eight stabilizers. It's kind of a lot. And this has been like a really particularly weird build here, this Compax MX11800 meme rebuild. What builds did you go for? We first worked on a KMAC Happy, and that took about 10 hours because we lubed all the switches from nothing. Um, and then we proceeded with a sort of regular build and then we had some actual issues that arose in uh, pads that I lifted. So I had to enlist the help of chat um, to, to have me address all these issues. I finally did it, but that was a long build. Second build was a simple hot swap build, tray mount hot swap. Nothing really, yeah, I don't think there was anything major complicated about it, but did it turn out okay in the end? Yeah, uh, I mean, okay in the sense that like, it's pretty scuffed. I, I've received it scuffed. I've made it scuffed even more, to be honest, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's the build that I wanted. It functions the way it needs to, or the way that I wanted it to. It's a good build. So I would say overall, yeah, it worked out at the end for sure. It's good then, yeah. I feel like I should put my stabilizers upside down to sort of be sure that all the wires are there. I'm so happy with the build I made yesterday. What what was it you worked on again? Had you mentioned it already? I think you might have. Gas, that's right, the gas 67. Nice. First gasket build, I see. Very nice. Oh, two more stabilizers.
almost done. Base bar stabilizer up last. What's your favorite build you've ever done? Oh, that's a loaded question. I mean, I'd venture to say the one that we did first today. But <laughs> there's a lot of recency bias there. Just all things considered, it's like, it is the board that like I think that I've always really wanted to put together. Um, but I've had other builds that were like, you know, the build was fun, for example. Like boards that I have like broken specifically to get a, you know, achieve a goal. Like I literally broke boards intentionally to do what I needed to do to them. I think about that Elixin's Eye stacked acrylic. I think about that one a lot. <clears throat> it wasn't HHKB layouts, so I turned it into one by cracking the case. Literally. It's like asking which child's your favorite. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm feeling it right now. Have a good nap? No? Are you tired? Stomach hurts. Stomach hurts? Yeah. Mm. Are you hungry? No. Do you have anything I. Oh crap, you're right. I've been just like wearing these contacts the whole day. I should change them, huh? Alright. I'm gonna. Is that the one that you built at your build-a-thon last year? Yes. <laughs> that it looks in Zai. Alright, after I put in all these stabilizers, I'm gonna go change into glasses so that way people who've never seen me in glasses before can see what I look like in glasses. And actually mostly because uh, I probably should get these contacts off. It's been almost 19 hours, maybe more, with them on. Not the healthiest thing in the universe now. <laughs> Is there anything I can do for you? Oh man, this thing is like scaring me. This piece of foil has just been like dangling around. And I think I've like crumpled it more than how it looked when I started. Oh, better remove, should not wear contacts that long, sir. Yeah. You're not wrong. All right, just wanna check in and see if anyone new has joined that might know the tricks of using cherry clip-ins, provided that I don't have any toothpicks. So um, I need something to sort of like shim it so that these don't like pop out but again no toothpicks here so if anybody has any suggestions uh, let me know uh, meanwhile I'm gonna go wash my hands and then take these contacts off so that you guys can see what I look like in glasses I'll be back hi hey, brother welcome back let me know if you have any clues on uh, cherry clip-in secrets
Okay, here I am. This is the same me, just a little different. Okay, what can I fill in? The idea is to jam in something uh, that isn't too hard, so you got a spare 2 by 4 You can make bits of wood. I don't have a spare 2 by 4 <laughs> Got a dumb idea. What if you just tape? Like you just use tape from the bottom. Like if you just, <laughs> like you know, like tape mod, but just the stabilizers. So like, uh, like here's an example. This is like numpad. You just like put tape there. <laughs> is that a good idea? Or is that like a terrible idea? I don't think it would really work, would it? Alright, uh, to be fair, I've been at this for 19 hours. So, <laughs> that's my excuse. You could roll up tape and put it between the clips. I was thinking, like, just try to, like, wedge it, like, little bits. Wait, what about, um... <laughs> you got an idea? What about pieces of uh, GMK trays? You think I could, like, try to wedge some of these in there? You know, the stuff that everybody loves, GMK trays? All right, um, absolutely. <laughs> okay, I don't have to figure that out like immediately, immediately. But I think what I think what I think would be worthwhile potentially is moving forward here with the actual build, and that's where these interesting guys come in. These are individualized plates per section, and I think these guys should work, I think, and I hope. You just want to prevent the clips from closing together, so Killing a trash ass tray to do so is worth it. Oh boy. Is this. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, did I blow it? Oh, this build cannot be complete. The spacing here is not right. Holy smokes. Oh, bruh. <laughs> hmm. Dang. Yeah, so I cut these plates um, somewhat interestingly, but I think... Yeah, I blew it. Wait, hold up. Now, now I got myself curious. Oh, yeah, up top. So, um, these plates were guessed. <laughs> Literally, G-U-E-S-S-E-D. -S -S -E like, plates for this don't exist. They don't just exist. <laughs> so, um, what I can kind of see here is... looks I don't know I, I don't know if I'm crazy but this looks a little warped um, but maybe aside from that we have 1.5 unit I'm trying to see if I'm, I'm crazy Oh 
Hold on. Okay, here's here's a picture of the board. Sorry, I, I apologize. I might be kind of scrambling all over the place here. Um, but I'm taking a look at these pictures of these boards. Oh my god. Roro keyboards with the big old raid. I apologize. I'm pretty tired here, so I can't do the, <laughs> the yell quite as much, but I appreciate it. Jason, seven of nine. Thank you for the follow. Um, Roro, thank you. Appreciate it. And welcome, everybody. Roro, what were you up to today? Hello. Bedtime shooter, welcome. Congratulations on the subathon. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're about almost 19 hours in, and we've run into a problem. <laughs> an actual, an actual problem. I had this plate cut incorrectly, and I gotta wonder, was this my fault? It had to have been. Had to have been my fault. Please stay hydrated if you can do it. Hey, will do. Hmm. Yeah, man, I'm not quite sure what the heck I did. So essentially this whole bottom row is supposed to be shifted by like a quarter unit. And so this just flat out will not work. And you know what I think might become evident is like if I'm going to hold it over this build here. Yeah. It's weird. It's a weird one because these are supposed to be... Oh, sorry. You guys can't see this. Um, or sorry. Yeah, my bad. My bad. Dang, what the heck? What's wrong with me? <laughs> I got these plates cut quite a long time ago. And then I, I guess I just never checked it. I never fully checked that this would fit over. All right. You know what? Let's look at the plate file. Gotta get this machine on here. So one second while I get everything sorted out here, we're going to locate my mistake. If it was my mistake. Pretty sure it was. I mean, I made more than one mistake here, I think. One was <laughs> not checking this when I got it. All right. So. Well, we can minimize that. We'll open up these plates. And what I'm looking for is finals for June order, I think. Rename for upload. 
Problem is you made the plate to be symmetrical, but the board has two 1.5 unit keys to the left of the space bar and two 1.25 unit keys to the right of the space bar. That's my guess. No, uh, they're they're 1.5. Uh, all of these are 1.5 on both sides. Um, so let's let's quickly take a look here. Um, number one. Uh, let's open alpha. Yeah, right here. I think this is what we need. Here's the problem. What? No, that's not the problem. Let's see. Okay, this is the problem. These two guys are spaced correctly. And that is 1.5, 1.5 spacing. I think that what my issue is, man, what the fuck was I doing? <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. Uh, let me go to object. No. Uh, preferences. Units. We're going to change these to millimeters. Millimeters and millimeters. Uh, the type could stay as points. Okay, so this point right here is 21.202, and this one right here is 33.549. So about, uh, what was that, like a 12 millimeter difference when the correct spacing right here was supposed to have been. 221 minus 206, which is about 15, 15 millimeters. So this is this is off by like some X amount of spacing here. Um, what was I thinking? <laughs> like that's what it should have looked like. And then everything accordingly, I think, from this point to here, must say, you know, must get shifted over three millimeters as well. Oh man, that's a bummer. So the keys on the outside are good, but the three in the middle are, yeah. Um, well, it's like uh, left control, left alt, and then space bar. Now, one of the problems is I got this plate in alu. So what was the purpose of this? So let me explain. <laughs> let me explain the situation because I think there's a story here that is kind of being not told right now, which is that I have these just like floating plates here, and all they're actually supposed to do are just make sure that the key or the uh, the switches are aligned when I solder them in, because I'm intending to use three pin switches. <laughs> That's literally it. Um, now a problem here with this guy is that if the whole point of this was just for alignment, um, if this were not like a hard metal, I could just cut the bottom row off and then just try my best to align this. <laughs> you know, like if this were like in palm, I'll just I'll just snip this all off. 
but this is not going to be so easy with this cut in alu. And that's what sucks. <laughs> you gotta have the plate remade but on the bright side it'll give you time to get to the bags. <laughs> that's that's true all right so here's the deal I'm supposed to have built this board for the giveaway at 325 subs I don't know if I'll make that in the next five hours um, if I do then <laughs> the idea is that like I'll be giving away this board that is yet to be built and can only be built like at least I don't know I want to say three to four weeks after this point because that's Pinoco's lead time <laughs> um, yeah and then I got to figure out this spacing here this is a weird one I got to tell you I'm not sure how this happened <laughs> I'm not sure how this happened. Um, but at the same time, I'm not trying to be like too optimistic. I don't know if we'll hit that because it's five hours. Um, unless you have the one plate remade in Palm. So I'll, happens to the best of us, for sure. Well, that's a bummer. Well, I'm glad I figured this out now when most people are still asleep. <laughs> so uh, we could just brush this under the rug. Um, you know what the sad part is? Is that like reassembling this, like just to like get it back all into place is like, super annoying I, I guess we should just should though because I've already kind of forgotten how and maybe we can just kind of go over it <laughs> still asleep it's 10 a.m. it's 10 a.m. for some for some but not all some toothpicks uh, do, you, do you guys have any recommended toothpick uh, widths to get on Amazon <laughs> you guys have any Amazon links for toothpicks that you think might fit into this uh, into these cherry clippings if anyone can post Amazon link I appreciate it be doing some of this off camera maybe the shoulder shoulder view might be more helpful and also maybe I should plug this in first because there are some toothpicks that are like they don't there's no standard like one singular toothpick width or toothpick size right Like, I'm certain there was a way to do this more intelligently. <laughs> I'm certain, but uh, I did not do that.
which screw goes where? I guess we'll just choose a screw. You don't have any metal cutting tools? No. I was supposed to steal a Dremel back from my family's place uh, back at the uh, beginning of August, and then I just forgot. <laughs> uh, with that said, I, I just, even then, I don't know if I trust myself. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I don't remember what these internals are supposed to look like here. Uh, contact MX Lemon internals. Oh, geez, I don't remember what this was supposed to look like. I'm not going to lie. A general even better, a grinder with a cutting disc would resolve that plate issue in minutes. Yes, but I'd also need the space, like, the, literally, like, not just, like, the physical, like, you know, not that I don't have enough space, which I don't, but I also need, like, the right type of space to do it, like, one where I'm not in an apartment. <laughs> Okay, so do I put, fuck, I don't remember the sequence of this. Does the foil go down first? And if so, then what's the point of the foil? Sorry, state of affairs here. Okay, so that's where that's supposed to go. But I don't remember if it's if they're supposed. To, I'm and I guess like this this foil goes down first, in which case I don't know what the purpose of it is. Followed by this plastic. I guess. an apartment too but I'm in a town so I can get away with more 32 apartments in the building and the landlord knows you too <laughs> geez Louise I legitimately don't know what I'm doing right now I don't remember the order Like, I could probably watch my VOD here and go back, I don't know how many minutes. Uh, just fucking send it. I, ah, oh man, I'm not going to do that. Uh, channel. I'm going to watch my own VOD. Ah, oh, okay. Disassembly. I, I full pulled that out. Okay. Right, you guys can't see what I'm watching, but I'm watching myself. And just FYI, at some point I'm going to need to take a, a little potty break. I got to pee pretty soon. Okay, it was foil, then plastic. Yeah, foil then plastic, like foils down first, then the plastic, and then this, this whole assembly thing. So I gotta figure out how to safely do this because I pretty, 
I pretty strongly crumpled all of this. But I don't even know what the real purpose of it is. I'm not gonna lie. And I also don't know where this wire is supposed to actually go or come from. Did I just close it? What am I doing? Okay, the wire comes all the way around. That's kind of what I have right now. All right, that's what it's supposed to look like. That's what it's supposed to look like, almost. There we go. Why is the foil, if you cover it in plastic, prevent interference? I guess so, but what's the point of the foil in the first place? It's weird. I can't really see it. Oh shit, there's a ground wire I forgot to put in, which I think goes right here. Good job, Chris. I'm the best. There we go. Okay, what is next? Uh... Routing's got to be fixed. I don't know. I don't think there's much more left on this. I think I just put the top on. Yeah, this is just the most annoying part is dealing with that while it's like, you know, opened up. Alright, what have I fucked up now? PCB is like kind of out of position, I think. There we go. it there so now all I have to do is just screw in
All right. It's pretty quiet. You guys can hear music, right? Because I don't. <laughs> Asking Bia to make you an interference cable for that build would be kind of sick if you already have cables from him. Well, I'm not familiar with this, uh, this fellow Bayo. Do you think I need one? I mean, this is <laughs> the funny thing about this build is that one, it's supposed to be up for giveaway, and two, is that the build is supposed to be a joke. <laughs> Like, I was going to put some stupid-ass switches in here. So... <laughs> do, I, do I need some sick cables for this? So, where, where have we landed? One, um, the stabilizers um, are tuned. Two is that these uh, these jumper wires have been all soldered in, as they used to be inside of the individual switches. But the problem is, in order for us to use three pin switches on this, we need these working plates. And I have three working plates and one bad one in terms of plates for individualized sections. So the one bad one here, I need to get redone because the only other option from that point is to go and use five pin switches, which I just, I don't have spare five pin bottoms that I want to use for a joke build. <laughs> Instead of having a limo break out uh, to a short cable to USB, see it could go directly soldered in the board i see it, this is a really weird one right because i mean like it's got the situation with the two like it's got ps2 to uh, essentially like dual ps2 out which includes like the keyboard portion and the uh, the mouse portion and i wonder if there's any sort of um i don't know like like for the fact that i need like a, a pretty like an active dual adapter for this makes me think that doing something like that would not be necessarily super simple but it would be cool yeah you know controller yeah i guess that's where this is like what's what's inside of this right i think that that's where like the the brilliance is i mean unless this can this whole situation can be internalized which uh, i would venture to say is kind of not gonna be the easiest thing especially for me like i'm not i'm not that handy <laughs> you know all right i mean it looks like this is sort of i don't want to say this is a failure it's just uh it's delayed <laughs> this is a delayed build <laughs> me I will I would like to tidy up um, and 
also I need to go pee and take a pee pee break at some point. The controllers that are used for hand wired builds can support mouse input app uh, mouse input, so that would probably work. Oh, interesting. Well, that's kinda cool. It took me a while to process that, but that is that's that seems nifty. Alright, let me take a look at what's in the agenda. <laughs> uh all right, I'm all over the place. I still got to pee. I'm supposed to be cleaning up, and now I'm looking at what we have done so far. Hmm. We have four and a half hours left of this stream. And we have a couple of options. One is to fix a couple of bad builds. One is to, or how do I put this? There's a couple of categories of things we could do next. Oh, let's see, okay. You could remove both PS2 cables and feed them into that. I see. Man, that seems challenging though. <laughs> this seems like way beyond me, especially considering, man, I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> this portion of it by having it usable. Okay, categories of things to do next. One is uh, fix a keyboard that just happens to have issues. And I have a couple of boards like that. Two is to build a brand new keyboard, which do I have good, do I have anything good to allow us to do that? And I don't know the answer to that question right off the bat. Kind of. There, there actually is one board we could do. Build a brand new board. Uh, let, me, let me check a couple other things here. We could sort of. We could scan some photo film for, I'm just writing these down. This is not showing up anywhere. Key circle, good morning, you tired yet? Oh man, it's, it's been hitting me here and there for sure. Four is we could play some, some more Splatoon, but I'll be at, you know, 20 hours awake now. <laughs> I'm not sure how many people would be interested in that. Especially like me molding with no sleep, poor quality play. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I mean, or just other games, I don't know. Uh, oh, I could tune a, a Topre board, which doesn't really count under the, uh, the fix a board issue. <laughs> time for more coffee I, I I don't drink coffee so so I'm up here with no coffee I'm not a coffee drinker the only caffeine I ever get is from coffee ice cream but I do need a pee soon <laughs> uh, you know you already know the drill It might be time for some. I'm thinking of running a poll right now. I know that there, I, there might not be a lot of whole a whole lot of people here right now because it's 
weird hours here. Um, but I'm like, what to do next? Uh, fix bad builds. Brand new keyboard. Tune tope ray. Tope ray chores. Scan photo film. <laughs> <Split two. laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna put this five minute poll up for those of you guys who are here and would like to just choose. Whoa, okay, something is a little funny with this. Build. All right, all right, five minute poll is up. Okay, poll is up, I need to go pee, I'll be back. All right, I am back. All right, build a new keyboard is up, which is kind of expected, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why I would expect anything different. But scanning photo film, I'm glad to see that have a vote. All right, uh, in the meantime, I am going to, again, continue to try to tidy up, which is a near impossible task. <laughs> a near impossible task. have to be cleaned up kind of with a decently high priority. Just to get some floor space back. You know what I didn't put in is uh, work on fixing this plate. This plate we busted up. That's a bummer that that plate is all fucked up and it was my fault that I fucked it up. <laughs> because I don't think that plate was cheap. And the whole point of this is that it's supposed to be a goofy board. And I couldn't even goof it up right. Has won. All right, build a new keyboard. Again, I don't know why I. <laughs> I don't know why that wasn't gonna be the obvious one. All right. And again, thank you for your patience as I tidy up my place. I've got a couple of ideas for builds, but I just don't know how well it'll all work. Um, I 
don't actually know. So one of the things that's on my mind is, is a question of whether or not I actually have any tray plates, like tray MX plates. So I think that's actually like kind of a critical question. Of one of the possible builds I could do today. Yeah, I think I'm, oh, shit. What am I looking for? An MX plate. Have I got any MX plates? MX tray plates. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the builds I have. Um, one is a, I'll just, I'll type it out. Fuck, it's like I gotta know if I have this stuff. All right, I have to open up Pinoco to see if I've ever cut these certain plates before. Because this will this will affect the option <laughs> that I choose of what board, what board. Like I, I'll I'll run a poll, but like I don't even know the poll options. All right, I got too many tabs open, by the way. So a little bit of a wait. Let me think about possible MX plates that I've cut. Okay, I've gotten MX plates cut before. One of them was, oh yeah, I don't have any other MX plates available that would be useful for this. Okay, so that's another thing I need to get from Pinoco. Um, I need a, uh, let me write this down on my to-do list. Pinoco, Pinoco fix uh, MX11800 plates and a uh, new MX tray plate for duck poker. I'm trying to figure out this duck poker build and I don't have anything to build that with right now. So I need a new plate for it. So among other builds I could do Well, I have one. Ah, man, these these builds are nice. <laughs> these builds are too nice. Yeah, because I have one that would take us right to the end at noon. I think we can just do it, uh, guys. Yeah, I'm just gonna. <laughs> sorry for my indecisiveness. 